what is the best way to brew coffee? Or what is the best way to brew coffee, at least according to me? That's what we're going to take a close look at today. Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Asa, aka the Coffee Chronicler. I'm a certified Q grader and I've been writing about coffee as a journalist for the last uh, six, seven years. Today we are going to do something fun. We're going to look at a bunch of different brewing methods, brewing styles, and we're going to rank them. So obviously this is not an objective list. It's going to be pretty subjective. So I hope if I offend your favorite brewing method that you're not going to take it too bad. After all, this is only my opinion. So if you strongly disagree with any of this, then let me know down in the comment section and uh, maybe I'll look closer into that brewing method. You are probably all familiar with this tier list here. So basically it's uh, pretty intuitive, S is super, and then uh, basically you just follow the alphabet down and obviously A is better than E and F. So yeah, let's just get into it. So the first brewing method we're gonna look at is the classic drip coffee maker. Actually, I think you can make a pretty good coffee with uh, the old school drip coffee maker. Uh, if you think of something like the Mocha Master, you have some good coffee, you know what you're doing, you're able to extract a pretty good brew. But on the other hand, I think 99% of the drip coffee maker coffee out there is probably not the best. Uh, usually there will be some issues with cleaning, people don't pre-rinse the filters, there will be some oil stuck in the bottom of the carafe, uh, which will taste quite nasty. So even though I think technically it's a very solid brewing method, I'm only gonna put it here for a C, at least for now. Next up we have the Nespresso uh, capsule coffee maker. There are some good things to say about the Nespresso, but there's also a lot of bad things. I don't think it's the worst kind of coffee you can make. It's uh, pretty consistent, which is good. It's also kind of expensive for what you're getting. It was controlled by Nestlé for many years, but then after the patent ran out, uh, this kind of opened up the possibility for other companies to get in on the action. And actually there's uh, quite a few specialty coffee brands uh, that have been experimenting with uh, Nespresso capsules. So it was a kind of brewing method that was uh, dominated a little bit by an evil organization, but now it's been opened up to a lot more companies. So just for that reason, and because it's extracting really well, I'm gonna give it an E for now. Next up, we have the classic cowboy coffee. Uh, I haven't made much cowboy coffee in my time. Uh, I can understand why some people may have a nostalgic uh, feeling about it, but uh, yeah, as I see it here with all this fire coming out, I imagine that the part is not really clean. I am gonna give it an E. The next brewing method we're gonna talk about is uh, going to be highly controversial. This is the Ibrick uh, Sesve, it's also called, or just uh, Turkish coffee. So this is the kind of coffee that you get in a lot of uh, Eastern European countries, in the Middle East. Uh, usually there will be some sugar mixed in if you travel there. What's interesting about Turkish coffee is that uh, people who are into it seem to be really passionate about it. I tend to get a lot of questions via DM or email about whether a certain grinder can grind fine enough for Turkish coffee. So obviously there are some people out there who are really into it. I gotta be honest and say I haven't seen Turkish coffee in many specialty coffee shops. And I guess there's gotta be some good reasons for that. I know there's actually a world championship for the eye break and that some people take it really serious. But from what I've experienced so far, uh, yeah, I can't really give it more than a D. So if you're sitting out there and you're a hardcore eye break fan, then let me know down in the comment section whether I'm wrong, but uh, please keep it civil because I know uh, a lot of you guys really love this brewing method. Next up, we have the Nell coffee dripper. Uh, this is uh, yet another brewing method that is not uh, that popular in uh, specialty coffee shops. Uh, I will say when you find a place that makes it, usually it's really, really good. I've also been experimenting more with uh, flannel coffee at home. And uh, besides the cleaning, the upkeep of the filter, which is a little bit annoying, uh, I have to say that the coffee 
this brewing method produces is just super delicious. So I'm gonna give it a B. Okay, the next brewing method is uh, manual espresso. I wanted to separate manual and electric espresso because I feel like these two brewing methods are quite different and they also cater to different types of people. So manual espresso is something that has become super popular in uh, recent years. I have the flare here, uh, which has a strong group of supporters. I could just as well have chosen the Picopresso, the Robot. A lot of these manual espresso makers have a lot of fans uh, and people who uh, like to experiment with uh, brewing at home. Overall, it's just an affordable, easy way to get into espresso and uh, you'll be rewarded with some pretty good shots. So for now, I'm going to put this one into the A tier. Okay, the next one I wasn't really sure whether to include, but that is uh, nitro coffee. So I think technically nitro coffee might be close to some of the other iced coffee methods, but since you're basically pouring it the same way as you pour a beer, I think uh, it's a brewing method in itself and it should be treated as such. So when nitro coffee started to become popular five, six years ago, I was actually pretty enthusiastic about it. I had a couple of good ones uh, in the beginning, but ever since then I found it kind of difficult to find some uh, really bubbly, foamy uh, nitro coffees. And uh, on the other hand, it can actually be pretty disappointing at times. So I'm sorry Nitro Coffee had a lot of promise, but I'm only gonna give it a D for now. And while we're at it, we might as well just talk about cold brew right away. So cold brew, I'm not really sure whether I should put it as a brewing method in itself, but it seems there are enough uh, dedicated cold brew coffee makers that you can kind of see it as a separate brewing method. So basically, I think cold brewing coffee is not really very efficient. I don't really think it's the best way to uh, get the best out of your coffee beans. I have occasionally tried some cold brews that were pretty good, but I think the rule more than uh, the exception is that it tastes a little bit flat, a little bit dull, sometimes even a little bit nauseating. So I'm also gonna give cold brew an E. And then you're probably wondering what about Japanese iced coffee? Yeah, I think Japanese iced coffee can be quite tasty. But since you're basically just uh, substituting some of the water in a pour over coffee with ice, I don't really think it's a separate brewing method that I can uh, include in this video. But uh, yeah, if it's hot and you want to make Japanese iced coffee, then uh, I think you should go for it. Next up, we have the well-known and legendary cupping bowl. So uh, I'm not really sure whether you should see cupping as a brewing method per se. I don't think there are that many people who are sitting at home and then uh, suddenly just preparing a cupping bowl because they want to have some coffee. So usually cupping is used for evaluating coffee. Uh, I will say cupping is uh, really good for that purpose. Besides comparing coffee, I don't really see the use for it. I have had a lot of really tasty coffee through cupping. There's something about that slow steep and uh, that attention to detail that you get when you're using a spoon that actually really uh, emphasizes the qualities of the coffee but as a brewing method I can't really give it a high rating it's probably going to be a B for now. The next brewing method on the list is the Keurig K-Cup. I'm just gonna put it down here and then we'll move on. Okay the next one is really interesting that's the Vietnamese uh, Finn coffee maker. You don't really see it that many other places but if you've been on holiday in Vietnam I'm pretty sure you've seen uh, one of them. So when you think about it, the fin is actually a pretty interesting uh, technology. It has a dispersion screen, it has a metal filter. Technically, you could call it a zero bypass brewer. So it kind of combines a lot of these small modern things in coffee brewing. When you get the coffee from it in Vietnam, it tends to be very strong, robusta coffee, which uh, some people actually really like. So if you're used to thin coffee from back home, then you're most likely going to be amazed. I have heard about people who are brewing specialty coffee in the Finn, but uh, I haven't really seen it in uh, real life. And uh, this is a little bit weird since I was actually recently in um, Ho Chi Minh City uh, to be a judge at a roasting competition. And none of the Vietnamese people who were there who were brewing coffee, they actually used the Finn 
uh, as far as I remember. So it seems like the local uh, specialty coffee community in Vietnam haven't really embraced it. It's interesting, uh, it's got a lot of stuff going for it, but I think I can only put it in the D tier. So if you think I made a huge mistake here, then let me know in the comment section down below. And while we're at it, I just briefly mentioned Zero uh, Bypass Brewers. Uh, here we have one of them. I don't know if you can see it, but this is an old promotion picture uh, of the tricolet. So uh, this is not meant to represent the tricolet per se. It's more meant to represent the whole category of Zero Bypass Brewers, which uh, as we're speaking is probably only the tricolet and the next level brewer. I haven't used the next level brewer, so I can't really say how well it's performing. But from my impression and uh, what I've been experiencing with the Tricolet, it's a pretty cool technology. It's a little bit cumbersome, takes some time to get used to, but uh, you can brew some uh, really tasty coffee. Uh, you can uh, get to those uh, crazy ratios like 1 to 22 is possible with a zero bypass brewer. Uh, so I think. There are some interesting things going on in uh, this arena and I want to reward that kind of uh, thinking. So I'm not going to give it an A, but it's going to get a big B up here. The next brewing method is instant coffee. Instant coffee doesn't really need any introduction. Usually it's not that great, but on the other hand, it's never really uh, super, super awful. And that's actually a pretty good thing. So if you compare it to something like the drip coffee maker, which tends to get uh, dirty and moldy if people aren't paying attention to cleanliness, uh, with instant coffee, you can just go to someone's home, uh, they offer you some and uh, you can drink it without being worried that it will be super terrible. So instant coffee is always a pretty good bet. It's never really that outstanding. So I'm gonna give it a C. When you think about it, it's actually a pretty amazing technology and it enables a lot of people who don't have the patience and time to make good coffee. Yeah, they can do it with instant coffee. Next up, we have the Delta coffee press. I wasn't sure whether I should include the Delta coffee press in the same category as the AeroPress, but I just feel like the technology is too different. So this is a kind of brewer that is in its own category, but since there are not any uh, other brewers in here, it feels a little bit like I'm uh, only talking about uh, one company when I should be talking about brewing methods. But yeah, the Delta Coffee Press is a brewing method in itself. It's also a company. Uh, when it came out, I was actually really excited about it. I had some good coffee. But then uh, for some reason, I kind of just forgot about it and it ended up in the back of my shelf. So it was very promising, but for some reason, I just have to give it a D because it didn't really leave a lasting impression. And I'm not really sure if I would recommend anybody to get it over the AeroPress nowadays. The next one we have is an old school favorite. It's the Coffee Siphon. It's actually a really old technology. And when you think about it, it's a very cool, way to brew, it's very steampunk, it looks great, and uh, you can actually get some uh, really good coffee with it. The downside is that it's just kind of messy, takes a lot of time, and uh, you need to store like all these uh, glass tubes at home, uh, which is a little bit worrisome. So I will say the siphon is a good idea if you have the patience, if you have the time, but in daily use, I just can't see myself using it very often. So I'm probably gonna put siphon down in the E tier. The next brewing method, I'm not really even sure if you could call a brewing method, but it's the drip coffee bag, which is a handy little way to get some coffee on the road if you don't have any equipment. If you have some nice coffee that's uh, ground well, it's vacuum packed into this uh, little package here, and you brew it like, uh, let's say, a few months after, it can actually taste quite good. So the drip coffee bag could actually be a kind of a gateway into more serious specialty coffee. And for that, I have to applaud it. But on the other hand, it's also kind of a wasteful brewing method. So for that reason, I have to deduct a few points. But the drip coffee bag, I think it is underrated at the moment. So I'm gonna put it into this tier here. If I can get the mouse right, I'm gonna put it at, at D. 
As you might be able to tell, I'm a pretty big fan of the AeroPress. Once again, it's a company and a brewing method. So there aren't really any other companies besides AeroPress making the AeroPress, but it's still a separate brewing method. So that's why it's included here in the list. As a technology, I think the AeroPress is very beautiful. It's very simple, efficient way to brew coffee and to have a minimal mess. It's also a very affordable coffee maker. And just for that democratic factor, I will give it some extra points. I have to say for beginners, it might be a little bit difficult to get the best results. Uh, but after a while, if you really dedicate yourself to it, then you will be able to get good coffee. You will be able to brew good coffee on the road as well, which is a big plus in my book. Uh, so when I go traveling, I uh, usually always bring the AeroPress Go, which is uh, very handy. Uh, so I'm gonna give the AeroPress a high rating. I'm not gonna give it S tier rating, but I'm gonna put it here in A. I think it deserves a spot here in the top. The next brewing method might be a little bit unknown to most people. And what you can see here, this is the RS16 from the coffee consulate in Germany. And the idea behind this uh, brewing method is that it's a glass filtration method. Uh, and it kind of allows you to brew some very clean brews. I wasn't sure if I was going to include this as a separate brewing method, but uh, I think it is uh, when you consider how it works. There are also a few other companies that are making uh, glass brewers out there. Uh, or are using a similar technology. So some of them do it better than others, but as a brewing method itself, I think it's a uh, very solid, it's a uh, very clean cup uh, that you don't really find with uh, anything else. So I'm gonna put glass coffee drippers in the B tier. The next one is one of the big guys, that's the French press. So most people have a relationship to the French press. Uh, Maybe they love it, maybe they hate it, um, maybe they just think it's a convenient way to brew coffee. I have to say, uh, for me, the French press, it kind of reminds me of my old days when I just got into coffee and I often had very bad results. That wasn't the French press fault per se. It was probably me who just didn't really know how to brew coffee that well. But I have to say, I think the French press is slightly overrated. So I'm gonna drop it into the C tier here with the drip coffee maker and the instant coffee. So these brewing methods are pretty solid. I think they belong in the same tier. They are the daily drivers for millions or even billions of people out there, but I just can't give them a top rating. Okay, the next one here is a pour over coffee maker. As you can tell, it's the Hario V60, which probably doesn't need much of an introduction. If you've been following this channel for a while, you know that we talk a lot about uh, pour over coffee. So it's not a big surprise that I'm gonna put it up here at the very top in the S tier. Next up, we have another of the big guys and that's the electric espresso maker. So obviously in any coffee tier video, it will be difficult not to put espresso in the S tier because uh, basically what is coffee without espresso and the espresso maker. Uh, the espresso maker is also the gateway into all the milk-based drinks such as uh, cappuccino, lattes, uh, yeah, you name it. So basically I will get into a lot of trouble if I don't put uh, espresso up in the S tier. So I'm gonna put it up here right next to pour over. And finally, we have the last brewing method that we need to rank, and that is the Clever Dripper. So I think the Clever Dripper is a different category from traditional pour-over coffee. So you could probably also include the Hario Switch in this category. I'm a little bit conflicted about this category. On the one hand, I think it's super easy. Uh, usually you can get tasty coffee uh, with the Clever Dripper. But on the other hand, I'm still not sure if I can uh, give it one of the highest ratings uh, overall. I'm probably just gonna drop it here at the B tier. So when you look at the neighbors here in the B tier, it's actually a very respectable category with some uh, really great tools. 
uh, that are not quite A, but uh, that most coffee geeks should still pay close attention to. So this is my full list of uh, coffee brewing methods uh, ranked by tier. Uh, again, this is just my personal opinion. So if you're getting angry about any of these things here, then I would probably suggest that you see an anger management therapist instead of leaving angry comments down in the section below. But uh, yeah, if you want to engage into a good discussion about what is the best brewing method out there, then uh, let me know down below. If I've forgotten any uh, other brewers or brewing methods that you think should be on this list, then also uh, write down below. And uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We just uh, got around a sharp corner and uh, we're going to produce a lot more content this year. So now is a good time to press the subscribe button. That's it for today. I will see you in another coffee video very soon.